So in the last video, we introduced, well, we mentioned without properly defining this notion of a partition. Okay. So now, let's try to explain exactly what we mean by a partition. So the idea is we've got, we've got the graph of some function starting at, let's say, A and ending at B. So we've got something like this, right? Here is y equals f of x, x going from A to B. And we want to find the area under the graph over that interval. Right? So we go through this idea of approximating by rectangles that we've been playing around with, right? Um, the partition, the partition really just refers to the interval here, the x interval, but we'll talk a little bit about how does that translate into the y values as well. Um, so in a partition, what we do is we, we choose points. We always take a to be our initial point, x naught, which will be less than some next point x1, which will be less than some next point x2, and so on, down to let's say xn minus 1, and then finally an xn, which will be b, right? So we get these intermediate points, x1, x2, x3, and so on, down to xn minus 1. b is xn. A is x naught. Okay, well, having chosen those points, you get intervals. All right, we get the interval from x0 to x1, that's sort of our first subinterval. Our second subinterval goes from x2, x1 to x2, and so on. So we might talk about, say, the so-called um, ith subinterval. Interval. Okay, um, going from x i minus one to x i, and so on. The last one would be from x n minus one to x n, and these have widths. Um, oops, widths, right? So there would be a delta x1, which would be x1 minus x0, delta x2 would be x2 minus x1, and so on. Delta xi would be xi, subtract xi minus 1, and so on, down to the last one, xn, subtract xn minus 1, okay? Now, um, usually what we want is a, a so-called uh, uniform partition. And in a uniform partition, each interval will have the same width, right? So each of these so-called, well, intervals or subintervals, if you want to call them that, will have width. Well, we take the length of the entire interval, which is b minus a, and we divide by the number of subintervals, which will be our number of rectangles, right? b minus a over n, okay? Um, having done that, then you can, you know, like we did in the last example, you can say, well, okay, um, we can now actually give formulas for these points, right? Uh, what we get is that um, x sub i will be, well, we sort of start at the initial point a, and then we add i times delta x, right? So i times this b minus a over n, right? Um, so x naught is just a, i equals zero. Right, x1, we add delta x once to get to x1. We add it twice to get to x2, three times to get to x3, and so on, right? So that index i is just keeping track of how many steps along the way we've gone, how many delta x's did we need, right? Um, 
And then to, uh, to actually do the Riemann sum, that's when you come and you, you come up to your function, right? And so for the R Riemann sum, well, now you also have to choose, given the partition, you now actually need to choose these points, ci in the ith subinterval, and then you evaluate f of ci, right? Um, having done so, you get the Riemann sum, right? So we can define that. So the Riemann sum, okay, for, say, f of x on a, b, using um, a partition, um, say, x naught equal to a less than x1, plus the next two, and so on, down to um, b, which will be our xn, is given by, and, and sometimes when we give this partition a name, you might call it p. Um, so it's given by, and you'll see this, we don't really use the notation too much in the, uh, in the book. Um, I guess f comes first. So it's the Riemann sum for f with partition p, and it's going to be the sum, i going from 1 to n, f of ci delta xi, right? And if it happens to be a uniform partition, and, and we might kind of say p sub n, indicate that it's n rectangles there, um, for a uniform partition, we can drop the index i on the delta x because it's the same delta x for, for every subinterval, right? And, and the ci's, um, there's no real rule on how you choose them. So usually for ease of calculation, like we've seen in some of the examples, we choose left endpoint or right endpoint. Um, if we want to be a little bit more accurate in our approximation, we can choose the, the midpoint, right? Um, but in principle, you can choose it however you want, 